Hey everybody, this is Conquero here with another Q&A, uh, number six. Today our special guest is Atlas. Say hello. Hello. And we also have Birdman joining us. Hey yo. Hey yo. <laughs> All right, uh, let's just get right into it. Uh, the first question we have is from Birdman. Uh, ironic, huh? Uh, <laughs> Birdman. <laughs> Birdman's question was, remember when we used to host World at War modded lobbies? Yes, I do remember. I remember at one point, both of our threads kept getting bumped to the top, and I think we posted on each other's threads saying that uh, we should like join in each other's threads sometime. I forget why, Yeah. maybe just convenience. Fun fact though, I'm not sure if it's with your thread, but Cass, like when he, I think early on when he started the site, he went into my thread for a mo World at War modded lobby, and he told me about it a couple months ago. And I searched the post through there, and you can bet he is in there. <laughs> oh my gosh, I don't think I had anybody like that, like in my threads. It was a bunch yeah. of scrubs. Yeah, I scroll back sometimes and click to see if they stuck around, and there's like a couple, but others now it's just like they were gone, like the day after the lobby. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and. Habafro, Habafro, whatever. Uh, <laughs> pretty generic question, but what drew you to Seven Sins and why did you stay on this form? Um, back in like, I think I signed up in 2010, but back like a couple years before that, probably like 2008, uh, someone, a friend of mine that I went to high school with, one well, grade school with, he showed me a Halo 3 modded user map, which like, you know, it's really easy to do. You could just use a flash drive, but at the time it just blew me away because you could see like Spartans and Elites on the map. I think it was a modded Guardian map. And uh, I just wanted to learn how to do that because I thought it was so cool. So I bought an uh, X4 360, like that hard drive case thing that you pop your fat hard drive out of and you put it in there. And because I like at the time, no one really thought of just using a USB. And uh, I used that and I, that drew me to Sevensons. So basically Halo 3 modding and then Halo 2 modding because of Halo 2 being like even on 360 you could do much more with a retail Xbox than you could you know before any exploits were really popular all right and why did you stick around just the community in general or any specific reason I, I don't know because I started reading probably in like 08 like I said and then a couple years later I signed up and didn't post anything probably until like 2013 but <laughs> yeah I, I just I, I guess I just I like the name and I, I like the one slogan at one point that the site had and I think it was only for a short time but it said like sevensins.com we are the reason why you need to update it, it just had a citizen <laughs> thing so and I thought it was really easy to navigate I like other game forums I just didn't I don't know, take to TTG yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean I know a couple of people from TTG there you know they're good people and everything but yeah I, I just couldn't I'm a, I, let's put it this way like right now the sevensins dark theme you know, can't go back to it. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, and Sombra's question. Atlas, would you be my lawyer and get me out of jail if I quote-unquote accidentally kill somebody? I feel like he asked me this before, or someone else, a bunch of people asked, like, jokingly, but I guess it would depend on what state he's in and what state, what state I'm in. So, <laughs> so, so no. I'd rather this not is it. <laughs> it, It's contingent upon what state he's in. Otherwise, like, you could get, like, a Basically, like a court give you a pro hoc DJ, which basically is like a one-time deal where you could practice it in your jurisdiction. You're not licensed to practice it, but the odds are they're not gonna they're not gonna do that. And I, I don't think Sombra would want me defending him on a murder trial in a state that I don't know what I'm talking about in. Fair so enough. yeah, probably no. <laughs> Sorry, Sombra. You said also make a sloth sound, no balls. What the fuck does that even sound like? Uh. We had it in the like last Q&A. It's probably uh, like a... I think it's like a meh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I, uh, it's as close as it's gonna get. I Sorry, Tom, bro. I, I don't even... That's a good question. Because I've seen plenty of sloth-like videos. They're pretty cute. You know? But... Uh, I don't know what they sound like. <laughs> and, on a serious note... How did you feel when you got to be part of the staff team? Yeah, pretty good because, like, it was kind of in a weird way too. Because it was when writer positions, like, there was no application for it yet. 
and it was at the time it was like Adzi, Cosmic Al, and Chop, and just I talked to Adzi a lot and, and Cosmic Al a lot. Yeah, you know, Chop was more to himself, but um, they just like Adzi and Cosmic just kind of said like I would try writing something, so I did, and then like I think Victory brought it up to the other st like the other people on staff at the time, like oh uh, Apple Pie Surge. You know, because I wasn't, I didn't have Atlas as the name yet. And like, oh, he wrote like 20 articles in a month, and they all been up on the homepage. Like, we should put them on. So it felt good to get uh, recognized for, you know, doing that. So yeah, it was pretty good to be included in something. All right. Uh, he also wants to know if you feel any regret leaving the team, and if there's any chance that you'll come back. Uh, I'd say, uh, you know, you can't really regret it because it was like a necessary evil thing. There's just no time and considering like when i left i was a super so like the other people that were supers you know it, it, it like how much time i could give the site right now for example doing reports it wouldn't be good enough for me to be considered to be a super it, it would just be wasting a spot i'd rather see a diet move up and be in that spot than me just occupying it so i don't regret it it was a necessary thing that had to happen and I, to be honest that day uh, when i told aaron like I woke up and I forget how many like reports were in the queue or maybe it was a moderation queue thing or something and I just like nope not feeling it so it worked <laughs> out I don't it, it had to be done and uh, whatever come back I don't think so just there's just no way because even in the summer like I'm busy working for uh, this courthouse and it, it just wouldn't be fair to the rest of the people on staff so I kind I really doubt it. All right, that kind of sucks, but <laughs> you know. No, it's it, it's all right. The site, you know. You know, people are doing their job. That's yeah. you know, the site's still going and stuff. And nobody can blame got me. T-shirts. So <laughs> <laughs> nobody can blame me though. You always got to put yourself before anything else. Uh, well, I mean, I just look at it as it, it just wouldn't be practical and wouldn't be fair to the site anyway. Yeah, it wouldn't so. be fair to you, all the time you put into what you're doing either. Yeah, yeah. I if mean, you were to would... like neglect it for the site, I'm saying. Kind of like I yeah, did college. Uh, <laughs> as, well, it's, like, <laughs> like, especially with what's going on now and just like the amount of money you put into it and crap. So, uh -huh. like, especially the first year back like, for law school, it's just, yeah. <laughs> I became a recluse. Speaking of which, uh, Pyroman's question is how is law school going so far? Yeah, it's better. Uh, it's like a three year thing, but the first year it's kind of bad because the way it depends on what school you go to but the one i'm at it's like they have a, a curve and every law school has a curve and they grade on it but like the average difference differs between the schools like the average grade that has to be given by the professor so like the professor if he gives an a or she gives an a you know they have to give an f so it averages out to a c in the end so it, it, it basically it rigs the system so that a third of your class will fail out by the end of the first year so you can bet there was like i don't know probably like 55 of us when we started first year and there's like 33 left so Dang. you know we're about yeah so the first year is kind of nerve-wracking um because you know if you you get kicked out it kind of kind of sucks i mean they give you an option to appeal and be like hey i can can i come back but a friend of mine tried to do that and they wouldn't let back in but so it's it's going much better now that i'm in my second year because the gpa like curve shifts up the only problem is there's less people to compete against you know what I mean? Because it's yeah. not how smart you are, it's how smart you are compared to other people. When they kick out a third of your class, like the bottom third that you normally do better than, you're just left with everybody else that's like as smart as you or smarter than you. So it's, it's but in the end, your GPA curve shifts up, so it, it kind of equals out. So yeah, it's going all right. Much better than it did, like first semester where everything was nuts. That's good. Uh, just. You know, a disclaimer, I will be skipping quite a few questions, because <laughs> you're a popular man, Atlas. <laughs> and some of these nah. aren't aren't really all that serious, so... Fair enough. Uh, he did have another question. Well, he had two other ones, but as I said, I'm going to skip some. Uh, <laughs> PM me if he wants. <laughs> yeah. If your question didn't get answered, feel free to message him. I'm sure he wouldn't mind. And Marco if he does, just, then... like, flying the thread, too. I can well, go back and look. It's but locked, but yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, he did have another question though that's pretty relevant. Uh, what made you fall in love with the Bioshock series, and which one was your favorite? 
a friend of mine in college told me like, yeah, you should definitely play this. And I had heard about it when it came out, but I just never got around to playing. And I remember it won all these awards and stuff for whatever reason. I just didn't get into it, or I don't know why. I must have just been busy playing like Halo and like World of War and stuff. Um, but yeah, my friend told me to try it out, and I got the uh, that Ultimate Rapture edition from GameStop, where it's like the first two games with all the DLC. But um, anyway, yeah, the, that's how I got into it. But the first one's my favorite. I think it's, you know, it has the most variety of elements in the game. Yeah, it's first person, but it also has like a survival horror kind of aspect to yeah. it. The scenes that are not jump scary, but are creepy. They're well thought out. They're not like kind of forced. Like I feel like some games are really forcing it. Like, like Until Dawn, like as much as I like the story and how you played it, it like some stuff, it just felt, I don't know. It, it just <laughs> felt less like improv and more like, yep, I saw that coming. Yeah. So yeah, so I'd say the first one. Uh, next question. What made you want to go to law school? Was it a passion of yours? Well, it's you know, and everybody's like, oh wait, what's that? That's from WWE. All right. Um, like you know, end of high school, being seventeen, going to college, and it's like, yeah, decide what you want to do for the rest of your life. It's it's stupid because people change, but I just happened to pick like, oh, I'll be a law major in college, and I liked it. <laughs> it's just kind of luck. I mean, yeah, I, I just like the subject matter. I like how it kind of scopes into ideas of business and philosophy and politics and kind of groups it all together. And it, it makes you kind of laugh. Like, I'm kind of cynical. So some of it really amuses me on how certain lines are drawn or how they used to be drawn. And Like, you look at, like, some cases from the 20s and uh, the way people thought about things. It's, it's just amusing. <laughs> So, yeah, it, it just, you know, that's why I picked this as my major and it worked out in college. I mean, most people I know changed, you know, decided to change their major a couple times. It just so happened that I liked what I was doing. That's good. At least you're doing something you like. So far, some stuff is dull, but other stuff is it's quite amusing. I think as of anything, with my college, oh, yeah. I, I hate the course I'm in right now. <laughs> yeah, what is it? Uh, the current course I'm in is... Uh, Infrastructures and usability, I think. Oh. Sounds like it'd be way over my head. <laughs> Interfaces and usability, that's what it is. Yeah, it's uh, it's a design course, but it's not. It's more like a psychological design than an actual like artistic design. Sounds interesting. You're like like studying how like, like... Yeah, studying how like humans and devices interact and designing for specific personas and stuff. It's boring. It's cool, but it's... But like doing... Doing it is boring. It's cool to learn about, oh. but yeah, the, the assignments are pretty pretty boring. <laughs> right, I get you. <laughs> right. And the next question is from government. Uh, why did you choose your name Atlas? I'm pretty sure it's obvious, but let's hear it. Um, I f I just think the whole plot. Well, I don't want to spoil anything to anyone who hasn't played it, but Atlas is a very enigmatic character. I think in the Bioshock universe so I guess that's why I liked it and just the idea too of um, being like a proletariat hero but secretly having like intentions of gaining power you know oh I don't care about money I don't care about stature you know I just want a fair shake and then little do people know like you know just because he gave them you know a, you know a piece of bread or some clothing all of a sudden they're totally loyal to him so it's kind of like the idea of you know people can be manipulated it's, I don't know it's just an interesting character Fair enough. It's kind of like why, like Conquer, is he manipulates puppets. <laughs> <laughs> Proper puppet master. <laughs> kind of relatable. <laughs> uh, if you could have and any we all, job. We all in... kind of play a game, you know. We all kind of put on different faces and stuff depending on the situation. Like how I type on Seven Sins is not how I talk to people in real life and uh, stuff like that. So yeah, I think well, a lot of people can identify with that. One is and isn't. I'm not as professional in real life, but. It depends on who I'm talking to. Seven Sins, like with Birdman, sure. I treat him like a scrub. <laughs> <laughs> but we're like friends, so it's not just yeah. like a, you know, a coworker type thing. Oh yeah, no, I hear you. Um, he had another question. If you could have any job in life, what would it be? I'm assuming lawyer, but anything specific. Uh, in-house counsel at a corporation. You know, you get your your 40 to 40 to 50, 60 hours a week, depending on what you're doing, and you know, you're 
it's a little more structured then because if you're at like a firm which is kind of what i'm a little interested in to get to you know to start or maybe work for a judge as a clerk um but with like you go into a firm and they want your 2000 billable hours it's just you know in a year it's just kind of nuts because like a third of the time you're talking to clients you can't really tally that as you know being billable because you have you have to keep track of your day like by six minute increments it's really weird but um huh. yeah like in-house counsel to corporation you're kind of more set in like a salary type of thing the only thing is it, it'll get awkward when you have to you know you're representing the corporation you're not representing the people that work for it so it'll get awkward but that would be my dream right there and I, i'm not sure what type of corporation but something like that in-house counsel all right that's pretty interesting um next question is from dabs uh, are you where you expected to be in life right now? It's like, huh? I don't know. I never really. I try not to plan things, just because. <laughs> I don't know. I got, like I said, I'm kind of cynical. I think sometimes the universe doesn't really care about what you have planned. But I, so I never really thought like in high school or college, like, oh, where will I be in this many years? I guess though, in like the end of college, I was thinking, okay, you know. And when I got accepted to law school, like, all right, uh, hopefully, you know. You know, I hope I don't get uh, kicked out or anything. So I guess, yeah, it was more on the hope of like, hopefully I do well enough. But yeah, so I'm still in it. So sure. So yeah, <laughs> more more yes. More or that. less. Yeah. yeah, more or less. I try to go day by day with things. Like yeah. I said, I'm not one for planning too far and ahead with things, especially like with life choices. You know, it's a difference between planning on how to get work done or, you know, trying to stay in touch with people. But the big choices, who knows? <laughs> get hit by a bus tomorrow i don't know <laughs> <laughs> then, then everything's over <laughs> that's, well, that's the thing you know because like a lot of people waste their time on worrying about things and uh really overthinking things and at the like end of the day you know you could be in a graveyard you know no matter what you're gonna be in a graveyard someday so don't waste your time you know yeah. over worrying or overthinking enjoy life as it comes yeah, yeah. I'm not saying be careless and walk into the street yeah <laughs> but, <laughs> but you know it's a balance i guess yeah all right, and the next question is by Professional. What was the funniest rage message that you ever received while hosting a modded lobby or just modding on Xbox Live? Oh, oh that's a good one. Uh, definitely Grand Theft Auto V, I was using a menu that a friend of mine let me use. I'm not even sure if it was ever released. This was somewhere of a temporary thing. A anyway, I was using a menu and all I was doing was driving around a car and like the paint was just changing colors really fast, you know, like not nothing just you know nothing too out there i wasn't breaking the game just my car was flashing colors and some guy like on the mic was going nuts and saying you're cheating i'm reporting you <laughs> filing a complaint and I, I said okay what about now and i turned on an option to start dropping money on the guy and he's like oh wait wait i'm like so you still for me he's like well no no so i stopped the money and then he's like freaking out he's like no come back come back so it's just funny because all i was doing was driving a car with colors changing and just because he couldn't do that it's like oh i'm mad at you but as soon as you kind of give them money or something then all of a sudden you cheating is okay <laughs> yeah pay him off I, I guess i mean i was just more looking at it like this guy thinks cheating or modding is wrong but as soon as you let them get some of your you know your benefits or whatever then all of a sudden it's okay it's, yeah. it's just it just made me laugh because this guy was, you know, because other people, I, there, there was one other guy who I started dropping money on because I was dropping on everybody in the lobby. But this one guy, I, like, he just ended up quitting, like, right after I started. And I hadn't realized he wasn't one of the guys standing around. I was just kind of going down a list. And uh, so, like, that person might have just been like, oh, I am dedicated not to cheat in this, which I can respect that. But it's just, you know, it's just funny because that guy, like, flipped out. He was angry. And then all of a sudden he wasn't. <laughs> so, yeah, that'd be the best. That'd be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and the next question is by our favorite guy, Beardy Man. Uh, we need a reunion uh -huh. session on Halo Three. You game? I would if I could, <laughs> uh, because yeah, uh, a bunch of people would ask me to come back on, and uh, particularly like one friend of mine from high school was saying, "Oh, why don't you come online anymore?" And yeah, my retail's gone until nine 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 nine, so that's not gonna happen. <laughs> well, and no. I don't really plan on taking going on xbox live through an rgh really anymore just because i i don't i haven't kept up with any servers or offline files i mean trust me i'd be willing to do it but the best thing i could say is buy an rgh or a jtag and then uh get everything set up so you can go on link 
because I mean like me and professional we did a halo like a modded halo night where we just played on a couple modded halo maps over you know link through you know rghs and then uh, unfortunately a bunch of people like said they were gonna show up and they didn't so it was like me and professional and his one friend <laughs> but it was still fun and we're like oh we gotta like try the game with a lot of people so so yeah it was, I, I would definitely do it that way so bearded man go buy an rgh nice your answer you gotta you gotta buy his love <laughs> <laughs> Blame Microsoft. Hey, I mean, it's a good investment, you know, Xbox Live is going to be down in probably a couple of years, you know, for 360, so you're going to still want to play 360 with, you know, more than four people, you yeah. know, as far as more than local play, or more than uh, doing a system link. So yeah, use Link, it'll probably be around. I imagine a lot more people will use it, like, once Xbox Live gets shut down. Because, like, right now, I mean, there's people on it, I'm not sure from where, uh, Exactly, because some of us think it's like, like South or Central America, but like people play and they don't even mod on it. Like on Halo Reach, there's usually always like 20, 20, 30 people on and they don't even mod. It's, it's funny. Like they just play because they like the game and they don't use Xbox Live. Probably because it's free. I think it's free. I don't know. Oh yeah, Link, you just, it's basically just spoofing the system Link into thinking. I, I mean, I don't really know how it works exactly, but it's something like that. So yeah, there's no really, no transaction involved. Alright, and the next question is by Al. Atlas, what are some of your failed dreams? Not a joke, but can be turned into one that's <laughs> too serious. Huh. I don't know. Like I said, I don't really, you know, plan things too hardcore yeah. ahead. Yeah, there's uh, gotta be uh, something that you... Maybe maybe like a dream is when you were a child that just kind of fell through. I mean, kind of like with... Man and I were discussing like before this Q and A started, just the idea of like working with uh, like electronic music and stuff, uh, especially stuff like that tear, ga tear gas and plate glass produces, or anything from like the like EBM, not EDM, that, but uh, EBM genre. Like uh, I wouldn't mind just making beats and stuff like that for fun, you know, and one day get really good at it. But you know, there's just not enough time. It's more, it, it's kind of drawing the line between um, what's more practical like yeah. i could wait use all my time trying to get a quote-unquote dream of becoming an electronic music you know ambient music producer or something like apex twin you know but it, it would take you know so i guess that's probably the closest i can get it would be like oh that'd be so much fun to do especially if i could yeah, do that'd be that. dope. <laughs> i think everybody has that like uh like i know some people you know like, like the college i went to a lot of people were like dance majors and stuff and like oh it's commendable you're going for your your art your dream and stuff but like for me even if i was into that i feel like yeah i don't know i'm not sure if i'd be able to put in the effort to make sure i'm that good and that i'm have a career that's sustaining for the rest of my life you know i don't know i don't i don't know yeah. too much of a risk for me but i, I admire anyone who has the guts to go for it i can relate i used to i skated for like eight years and then i was just just reality <laughs> like becoming a professional skater is like not very That's, easy to do these days can totally relate used to skate a lot uh the best i could ever do was like a fakey pop shove it so you know yeah. i could drop in and stuff but yeah no i, I hear you on that i was you know. i was pretty good inward heels yeah. nolly trays yeah i was showing off i mean i suck now <laughs> I, <can't, laughs> I probably can't even like go up a hill without running out of breath now <laughs> but Still, I mean, to do a tray flip, that's that's good enough, you know. I mean, it took me eight them. years, too, so I didn't, I wasn't really a quick learner. Ah, whatever, man. It took me forever just to learn to pop shove it, so yeah. and that's not hard to do, really. I just, I just wasn't that good. So, yeah, yeah, maybe the dream of being more coordinated. <laughs> well, if, if it makes you feel any better, I broke my ankle on a pop shove it over a three stair. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> it's such a small thing, but it is just that one... That one mess up that twisted my ankle the wrong that, way. That's all, all you need, man. Yeah, yeah I, was at, I was at this one park where uh, you kind of go down a ramp. It wasn't a drop in, it was, you know, dropping in sort of, you know, like yeah. quarter pipe ramp. It was just a regular one. You go down and then you kind of go, I forget what the term is for it, but it's one of those ramps where it's like a, like a trapezoid. Like you go up straight and then down. Well, someone took away the second part of that or like the last part of it where you go down. So like I'm getting ready to, you know, pump by going down to get the you know get the speed and yeah it wasn't that part of the ramp was removed so yeah i oh. fell had a, had a, i didn't break anything i just really messed up my Man. elbow but 
It was weird. It wasn't quite sprained. I forget what the doctor said, but I went the next morning. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. So I think I have. It. Yeah, I mean, pop shove it pretty good to fail on. But yeah, I was just going down a ramp. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah. I'd never skate though, cause I had a friend that like was into skating and he like messed up and then he had a seizure. So I'm good. Dang. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. Was it like? To, like from the lights in the park or was it literally just no just like he hit his head and like gave him oh. A oh my god yeah mm. like all a, right yeah like a bad concussion <laughs> wow that's yep i'd be deterred as well if i probably seen that in real life <laughs> yeah i've seen some pretty bad bills i've been in some pretty bad bills <laughs> eight years you know eventually you'll see something or experience something yeah, no doubt. I met this one guy that was a BMXer, and like he had like he didn't have a shirt on, and his like chest was like indented. And he said, "Cause one time, like years prior, he had fell and he landed on the handlebar." <laughs> so, yeah, I'm good. That's yeah. why I don't BMX. I'm good. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Right, oh, I hear you. Uh, final question is by Aiden. Why are you the greatest man alive? And do you love me? Uh, he does not love you. But he can answer the first one. <laughs> no, no, I love Aiden. We've had some <laughs> conversations, you know. But uh, no, I, 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 that's very flattering. Um, but you really should have a better role model than I. Am. <laughs> so. I mean, you're uh, loved around the site. Everybody loves you. Look at the amount of imagine. questions you got compared to. That's, all that's the pretty. No, but no, other people got some pretty good ones. Professionals' video was pretty, pretty lengthy. Yeah, so was Beardy Man, but. Yeah. I had to skip quite a bit, to be honest. So again, if your question didn't get answered, feel free to message him if he's okay with that. Yeah, feel feel free to spam me. Yeah, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Hit up that profile and slide up in them DMs. Goes down in the no. DM. I don't really like. Well, you know, I guess it's kind of catchy. <laughs> <All right. laughs> And that's all the questions we got. Is there anything you'd like to say before we end this, Atlas? Uh, Wubba Lubba Dub Dub. Alright, <laughs> if, you know if, if you know what that's from, kudos <laughs> to you. Rick and Morty. Yeah. Some great inspirational quotes from Marvel yep. Atlas. <laughs> no, no. Okay, no. The best quote from that show is uh, at one point when Morty. Like, he's talking about his grave, like, from his body, from a different dimension. He's, he's just like, I, I eat breakfast every day next to my rotting corpse that's, like, nine you know nine yards away in the yard. Nobody belongs anywhere. Uh, no one ex exists on purpose, and everybody's going to die. Come watch TV. Like, it's <laughs> by far my favorite quote from that. But there you go. There's the quote. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, All right, uh, yeah. Thanks for joining us, Atlas and Birdman. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no problem. And we'll see you in the next one. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Yoke.